round number two. I told you I wouldn't be gone long. We're on Top Deck Productions. We're watching Standard Magic the Gathering. We've chosen a random table out of our undefeateds to give everybody an equal opportunity. So you're looking at Justin Gibbing, who was our previous bounty, bounty marked man. Marked man. Uh, he went 10 rounds undefeated, which is uh, very, very good. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not easy. It's a pretty good win rate. <laughs> not easy being cheesy. <laughs> Against a local controlsman, Bryce Sheeler. Yeah, this guy... Uh, Counterspell aficionado. Guy plays his control decks. Um, I don't know how Esper -y his Esper control deck is. Uh, so there's kind of a standard Esper control deck. Yeah. That runs Chromiums and Bona. As oh, creatures. nice. Yeah, that, that Chromium package. Yeah, it's... Um, it's all right. So the mana isn't good. Is the big problem. Yeah. And by saying the mana isn't good, I mean mana is bad. I think. I think most. I was excited. I thought the mana would be good in standard because we have. I think the two packages of lands we have are very powerful. And once we complete the shockland cycle, the re, that reprint. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to be in good shape, but right now mana is bad for certain color wedges, certain uh, shards and wedges. Yeah, so I think you overrate like the the goodness of mana with shards and buddy lands. Uh, it's pretty good. It's strong. It can help you splash some stuff. But it's not going to just enable, like, these huge decks that are kind of all over the place with mana commitments. Yeah. Um, you really have to build your decks in a way that suits the mana that you've got. Yeah, so I think it enables uh, finishers from outside your two primary colors. But not, like, a card, like a must-have removal spell or a must-have, you know, turn, turn three board, mm -hmm. board presence guy. So here's the district guide. I have been a bigger and bigger fan of district guide every time I've seen it. Uh oh. I can't imagine all right, all right. running a green deck without uh, district guide anymore. Um, I think just as like a one over a two of it's very good. Is that better? Yeah. I mean, maybe. Yeah, here's a guy that can improve your mana. You can have a, like an off color guild Here we gate go. in there. District we'll guy, right? just run yeah. a basic. You don't need a guild gate. You want that to come into play untapped next turn. Okay. Come yeah, on. She knows come her way. On. She knows her way all the way around the district. Yeah, gets all the basics, all the gates. Probably don't want a gate, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. I feel like I could do a uh, postal service theme deck with district guide in it. Okay. So here's the thing with district guide and. Um, I'll be honest, I've been looking at it mainly in the the context of like an Abzan deck because that's where I want to be in standard right now. Okay. Um, I think just a Golgari splash white for Shall I? Less no. Less than <laughs> five cards. <laughs> you should have seen the face he gave me. Holy smokes. So Shalai is a great magic card in certain decks and in certain matchups, but man, does it not fit into the Golgari game plan at all <clears throat> I just wanted out there to protect all the guys I've played before it yeah they, so in the gold guard decks you don't care if your guys are dead you want them to spend cards killing your guys oh man add a man in response put a counter on that July one time give it to me let's see if he got there so he has the mana to do it. I don't know that he's got anything to cast it into turn. We're at the end of his turn, so Bryce... Is, like he, okay, he got that far. All right, we're marching. Oh, nice. He's going to get to march for an extra one. Yeah. Bryce could have hit a the gate there, but I think he was trying to fix his own mana a little bit. Sure. Because um, he wouldn't got a planes, which we had not seen yet out of him. Yeah, Field of Ruin is uh, an interesting way to fix your mana. It's really important if you're doing it in Esper. But I just don't think you can play Esper yet in, like, a, an actual competitive environment.
Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's tough. Oh, we're flowering. We flowering. Yeah, this is this is the big combo. You know, he gets the march at end of turn. Flower. We're not flourishing. We're just flowering. We're just getting the land. Oh, he's not flourishing. Interesting. So he wants to hit this six land drop to be able to pump his guys um, right. next turn for sure. Yeah, that puts Bryce to the test. It makes him have like a ritual of soot. Uh, of note, Bryce only representing one planes, which means you don't have to play around anything major here. And here's the big shoots. Big old shoots. Big shoots. This is so, after watching all the decks on stream, mm -hmm. I'm very in between the red deck and this. What's he doing? He's got, he's got them right there, right behind his graveyard. Uh, I think he's looking for a city's blessing token. Oh, sure. He is blessed. He's blessed. Justin Gebbing, blessed. I'm going to have to bring in, I think I have multiple foil city's blessings. All right, so Chemister's <coughs> uh, insight here. Right. Um, this card <laughs> should have probably been played in Bryce's main phase last turn. What's this? Oh, that's a cleansing nova. Cleansing nova. Just clean it all up. Yeah, I would have definitely played the chemistry's insight on Bryce's main phase last turn. Here is a kicked. Uh, Sapperling Migration. Yep. So that commits four power to the board. That's a lot of power. It's a lot of power, and it's uh, something you can't clean up with just, like, spot removal. So here's the thing. Cleansing Nova pushes the deck white. If he makes the choice to play Ritual of Soot, it pushes the deck black. Right. So that's where you have to make these deck building decisions. Also, so you like you have Sinister Sabotage in there. Right. Pushing the deck blue. Um, you're also playing, we've seen Essence Scatter, uh, Teferi, um, Search for Ascanta, Chemistry's Insight, all kinds of cards that want to push the deck blue. So blue is your primary color. Yeah. And it comes down to what you want to be your secondary color. And if it's white. You don't have access to Godless Shrine. You don't have access to Hollowed Fountain. So you really make a concession to having bad mana there. Yeah. Sending four. And you. Yeah, if you're going to win the game, Teferi is pretty irrelevant. So I think Justin's just like, yeah, let's win the game. So Teferi, for the record, always relevant. That's all right. Justin Gibbing is blessed. There, there we go. it is. He's blessed. Such a blessing. All right. What are we going to play? I think we're going to play out the history of Benalia. Yep. This represents lethal next turn. So Bryce has to counter unless he wants to go minus on Teferi to get rid of his Sapperling. There's a Sinister Sabotage. He chooses to put the land in the graveyard off the top of his library. Drawing the additional card from Teferi. We see a cast down in his hand. And here's a search. That might be a little late. Obviously, you'd want it on two. And if you're going to turn the corner, it helps you like get all the way there on the, on the corner turn. Yep. But this combat phase is going to put Bryce at one. Brace at three. So I would have. So you know he's going to counter your Tristani. Um, because he's keeping all his mana open. If he doesn't, he's just dead. Mm -hmm. I would have played out the Shalai there first. Because then he still has to counter it. Otherwise, he's never going to be able to cast down anything. And right. That's kind of his game plan there. Um, but. If he counters it, then next turn you play the Tristani, and Tristani's lethal. And here's the, the Ritual of Soot. 
Well, he's got them all, doesn't he? He's he's just as wide as we can build this deck. He's drawing multiple cards a turn, so. Yeah, listen, I'm not. That's how it works. <clears throat> Once you turn the corner, you've turned the corner. Uh, I think Justin has multiple March of the Multitudes in hand. Yeah, so he's definitely going to be able to resolve at least one of those. Well, I don't know about definitely, but he should be able to resolve one. Um, I don't know that I would play out Shalai this turn. If those are, in fact, two March of the Multitudes, just wait. Oh, no. It's an Amara. It's an Amara. Here's an Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter the Amara. This makes me want to try and resolve Shalai. Yeah. And that's fine. Uh, he's out of one card in hand. This is very good. You have to fight through these resources at some point. Next turn. There's another Cleansing Nova. Yep. It says go. Bryce is going to get three cards in the next turn cycle here because he's going to get one from the Escanta and then one from his draw step and one from Teferi. And he could. Oh, jeez. He needs to hit a counterspell. Specifically, a negate or sinister sabotage. And I think we've already sabotaged right, twice. I hope Justin doesn't bite on the bait here because this is. This is Bryce tapped very low. Um, so Spell Pier is the only thing that's left. So he's going to go for... Yeah, and this is going to walk right into Bryce's Nova. Yeah. So this is uh, walking into Bryce having both Nova and Ritual of Soot. Yep. But you, you kind of have to go for it there. Um, I personally would have just waited because I know he's only got the two uh, Sinister Sabotages left in his deck. Right. Here's Teferi hitting the bin, so every spell he casts is now unsummoned. Uh, not exactly how that works. Is it's every car card he draws. Is oh, is it cards drawn? My bad. And it exiles. Doesn't bounce. Yeah, you need to play every land you draw because he's going to be exiling land on every draw. Yep. But he's getting ready to, once you see that Teferi, basically scoop here. Like, that's game. Yeah. So close for Justin. Yeah. Kind of walked into the Cleansing Nova. <laughs> um, um, but other than that, it's just a... So I think it's, it's hard to play against... Uh, decks like this Esper Control deck, there might be a little bit of a like a, a list that we you know you're you have in your head, but it's hard to say exactly what he has. Um, I don't think it is. I, no, there's a standard Esper Control deck that's going around, um, and this is pretty close to it. So I mean, you you have an idea of what's going to happen, but. Yeah, once he played that second fairy, that was the game. But playing right. into the Cleansing Nova really is what sealed it. Yeah, I think this Selesnya deck comes up comes up big in the sideboarding because the Esper deck is almost pre-sideboarded for it with the amount of board wipes it has. Right. So I think Selesnya wins the sideboarding phase of the matchup a lot more than the Esper deck does. Um... I don't know about that. I don't know what the Selesnya deck has in the board that's particularly good here. Uh, but I do know that uh, this Esper control deck, when it loses, more often than not, it loses to itself. Like, it just doesn't have the mana that it needs. Right. Uh, and if you're playing Ritual of Soot and the uh, Cleansing Nova on top of, you know, Sinister Sabotage... The odds of not being able to cast one of those when you want to cast one of them is very high. Sure. So, pretty rough, but, you know, when you is, get there, you get there. Is this an instill infection? 
Uh, fungal infection. Fungal infection. That's the one where it makes the sapling and. Yeah, you neg one, neg one, and you get a sap. It's pretty good. Um, not great here. You don't really want to be one for oneing Justin's creatures down. Yeah, I imagine that's more of a hedge to the red deck. Yeah. Because you can you can take some down and then block a bigger thing with the. So it saves you a bunch of damage for just a black mana. It does let you trade uh, for a 2-2 two -two still, which is important in that matchup. Okay. Because they have uh, a bunch of X-2s. A bunch of X-2s. Not a lot of X-1s anymore. Well, I'm thinking about, like, so it kills, like, the common Vashino guy that deals them two when it comes in. Kills right. a Steamkin. Kind of. If it, you know, trigger on the stack, get your steamkin or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if they're tapped out and they just cast the thing, yeah, it, it kills it good. Kills it dead. Um, it doesn't. Freebooter's a one two. Uh, but nobody's really playing freebooter anymore, which is a shame. I think it's a, <laughs> a it's good a card. A crying shame. I like Freebooter a lot. The problem is that the Esper decks are just not very good outside of Jeskai Control, and it just dies in so many incidental ways against that deck. Yeah. So the other big, uh, <clears throat> the other big deck that came out of last weekend was Jeskai Control, uh, especially in New Jersey. <coughs> yeah, Eli Cassis. Taking that tournament down with Jeskai Control. Let me ship all the lists from that tournament into the chat here. You ship them all in. Shipping them on in there. That's me on the commentary page there. Um, so, yeah, peruse those bad boys. I love this Jeskai Control deck with Azur's Gateway. Yeah, that was a, a really interesting innovation. Um, can we talk about this card? So You can. Alright, I'll talk about this card alone then. Talk about it. So it it Murfolk it's basically a Murfolk looter. And if you loot away Hold on. Alright, it costs you a mana. Yeah. Every time you want to do it. Can't attack for one. You have to exile the card. Are you done stating irrelevant facts? Those are all relevant. Justin giving off to a hot start here with the 1-1 lifelinker. This is exactly where he wants to be against uh, a control deck like this. This this one card could represent 5 damage. Alright. Teaching Bryce a history lesson. All the different tokens. Bryce is going to have himself a moment of craving. Yeah, that's a so solid one to kind of keep him in the game. Maintains at 20. And here, Justin comes in for just his one. Dawn of Hope is very good in this matchup. Justin also debating on whether he wants to play the Shalai or not. I would absolutely play it. Um, so, yes, they can just counterspell it. You're running it into a Sinister Sabotage or the Essence Scatter. Um, but it doesn't die to the Ritual of Soot, so you're not uh, overextending into that. Um, it would die to a Cleansing Novia the following turn, but just the threat of dealing a, a lot more damage. Let's see very what well else is going to come in here. So here's a swing for five. Justin's going to gain another one. Uh, Bryce is going to go down to 14. Uh, Justin with five mana now. Did he just pass in the turn? Yeah, so I think he's um, hedging the Teferi so he can Conclave Tribunal. Sure. Yeah, that's a relevant, relevant thing to do. Um, he can also march the multitudes. I think he's got that in hand. Sure. I'm just saying. And th three damage. 
is a clock that Bryce is going to have to tap some amount of mana to deal with. Right. Eventually. And so if you he can get Bryce to two or three and try and resolve two spells in a turn, mm -hmm. or two spells in a turn cycle, March of the Multitudes is an instant. So yeah. end of turning that and then tapping again. Oh, Vona. This bad boy. Vona. Here's March of the Multitudes for three. three. And now, now he's going to flip the Legion landing. Yeah, we're going to, first we're going to Conclave Tribunal here. We'll get his soldier. <coughs> kind of overextending here, but you're going to Conclave Tribunal anyway. Yeah, and you're going to flip the Legion's landing. Yeah, flipping the Legion's landing is a big deal. Because now Bryce has to have uh, the... Oh, we got a so follower. Recycle Toad. Is he friends with Recycle Frog? Do they eat biscuits together? Wouldn't bet on it. Um, so Bryce needs to make a decision here. Uh, I think I saw a ritual soot in hand. Uh, so it should make this easy, but if he doesn't have it, he's in real trouble here. Yep, that's tough. So if he doesn't have it, I would represent Settle just to try and force a bad attack. I don't think there's a Recycle Frog. I think he was trying to make a bad joke about Fro Mr. Toad and Mr. Frog. Yeah, there's a children's book called Frog and Toad are Friends. Yeah, yeah. They eat biscuits. Yeah, here's an essence scatter. So I do like the Tristani pre-combat. Super Hans TV. Thank you for the follow. Um, we are still, yeah, that's an isolated chapel. We are still representing Settle. So here's the attack. Uh, With a little bit of a hedge. Five. Doesn't change the clock. So he's just going to take one and go down to seven. It gains two, takes three. Justin gains a bunch of life. So here we go. We forced uh, Bryce to have two cards. He doesn't have a card advantage engine up yet. This is where you want to be as Justin. You want to be asking a bunch of pertinent oh, questions. Oh, a But now you don't have to worry about... And I think Justin just has another Conclave Tribunal. Yeah, that'll do it then. I'm not super high on Conclave Tribunal in this matchup out of Justin. He might just not have any other way to interact with those cards. Um, but yeah. Cleansing Nova destroys all permanents, permanents right? Does it read permanents? I think it hits the enchantment. That'd be real bad news. Oh, it makes you choose one. Choose all creatures or choose or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Okay. Yeah, so we get um, Recycle Toad, yes. Go play Merfolk to your heart's desire. Are we talking modern Merfolk or standard Merfolk? <laughs> Permit me to play Merfolk at my PPTQ this weekend, so it's a, it's a standard season. Okay, then the only Merfolk I permit you to play is the branch walker uh you can play the unblockable one if you're gonna play the blue deck would not recommend would not recommend the blue deck not in a pptq all right i'm not on the level of um choosing like a specific thing for my my like choosing per tournament Okay. Like, okay, it's a PPTQ. This deck's going to be better than this deck. Right. Um, because I can't... I'm not on the level... I'm not good enough to where I can play all decks equally. Okay. So yeah. I um, think I think I just gain a bigger advantage by playing the deck I can play well for a tournament. Right. Uh, I think you could just, like, pick a good deck and stick with it, and that's fine. Yeah, I think that's what you want to do for most PPTQ seasons. Right. I just think that... Um, Mono blue is a little too narrow for a PPTQ. 
Sure. Like, you could run into, like, a Lich's Mastery deck or something random like that at a PPTQ, and you're just like, all right, well, I don't have any way of beating this guy, so. Sure. That's that. I'm going to lose this matchup that should have been just, like, an auto win because he's playing a random pile of cards. Yeah, how many, Recycle Toad, how many PPTQs do you, get, do you get to play in a year? We're spoiled because we could play, how many, how many run around us? Eight? Something like that. Like a if, lot. If, if we wanted to drive for an hour, we could play eight PPTQs a year. Or a season. Yeah, a season. Because um, I know I can get to, like, Richmond, Indiana. Um, there I don't one, think you need to go that far to get eight. There's one out of Batesville I could play in. Uh, uh, so Mono Springfield, Blue Ohio. isn't the Merfolk deck. We're talking about the Mono Blue Tempo deck. Uh, it just runs the unblockable 1-1 one, one Merfolk. Why would you play Mono Blue Merfolk and Standard when Kamena is the best card in the deck? Yeah, yeah. So if you're gonna if you're gonna play Merfolk, you play Kamena. Um, I, I feel also don't think that that's the best card in the deck. It's really win more. I think Silver Gala Adept is still the best card in that deck. Sure. I'd make the argument about the Lord, but okay. The Lord. So Justin's on the draw here, and Bryce is off to a two blue start. So. Oh, this is gonna be Jeez. good. Sorcerer Spyglass. Sorcerer is a nice Spyglass. One. Here's a, it's a big deal because he, Justin gets to see what, what to play around. What yeah, what to play around. I mean, he's obviously gonna name like a Teferi or something, but like, knowing what that he has this Ritual of Soot is a big deal. Yeah, you get to play around the Ritual of Soot. Uh, you get to play around. You can't we really play around. We see Chemistry's Insight, Ritual of Soot. Moment of Craving. Uh, moment of Craving. You can't really play around the Moment of Craving. It's just going to eat the first thing it sees now. Yes. What did Justin name? Teferi? Presumably. Teferi, all right. History. Man, that's a good card here. So, um, it forces the Moment of Craving on the token, which is half of the card. Yep. And he can't, like, he doesn't want to just sit back and let that happen. Because it represents a lot of damage in the long term. Is this a, a, uh, the big legendary artifact? An immortal sun? The immortal Why, yes, sun. It is. So we got a swing for two here. Um, we know he's got a ritual soot, so we don't want to play anything into that. And Justin's going to consider this second history of Benalia. I like second history. I don't like it pre-combat gives Bryce too much information. So well, Bryce is like no combat phase here. Oh, he he just got that knight. He killed the end of the night. Never mind. Right. Well, I mean there is, but you know, pre-post doesn't matter. Gotcha. So, yeah, I would definitely run out the history if Bryce taps out next turn, you're totally fine with it because then you get a resolve um something bigger potentially. Mhm. Mm and if you ritual of soots for two knight tokens, then it's just a one for one. The the reason I may have run it out there is to try and make this chemistry's insight awkward. I don't think that ever really makes it awkward per se. Bryce has it to fairy in hand now. All right, so here's the big attack step. Three four. Bryce. Grins and bears it. Here's the next history. On to the next one. Oh, nice. It's going to resolve. So here's what Justin's thinking in not playing the history last turn. Is that if he doesn't cast the history, then the odds that Bryce plays out the ritual soot are really low. Like, you don't want to trade a ritual soot for one knight token. Mm -hmm. So that means you get four damage in right now versus... You know, the eight damage or four damage in two turns from now? Yes. So now we're just going to see. And now, the if he gets the knowledge. Ritual of Soot, Justin gets to resolve the Immortal Sun. Yeah, absolutely. Which is going to be super hard for Oh, did Bryce he take two with. damage on a Water Grave that turn, or is that a Drown Catacomb? That's a Drown Catacomb. That's a Drown Catacomb. Yeah, I'm totally comfortable just swinging in for four here. And passing. Oh, and, and Justin got blessed, and he's got the arch. Yeah, we just get to draw a card into turn. <laughs> is he more? 
Does he have better card advantage engine right now than Bryce does? Bryce That's, has no card advantage engine. Uh, Without Teferi, he, he's a ways away from getting Search for Escanta online. So yeah, now you just pass the turn. You get to draw a card in the turn. That's fine. It's great. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. Nothing is nothing is wrong here. Yeah, I love the way that the, the different decks are positioned. I feel like um, nothing is super. The chemistry's insane. Yeah. Nothing is super overpowered right now. Right. And there's enough different questions being asked that the. Oh, this just in. Our bounty has been claimed. Not sure by who, but Luke has been defeated. Here's the ritual of soot. All right, there's the ritual of soot. Firing it off. He lost to tokens, which he defeated last week. That's true. All right, we're going to draw an extra card on this arch. All of Justin's knights are going to get pumped. All zero of them. Do we have another creature to play here? <coughs> I don't know no. that I want to run out the Immortal, Immortal Sun just yet. Yep. But I do want to play something. So he's going to pass. I think Justin's just going to fill his hand up. It's already pretty full. There's the field of ruin for this arch. Probably going to target this arch pretty quickly. Yeah, I got to imagine he's going to target it right about now. Funk's old brother. All right, so we're going to search. And then we're going to draw. Okay. I would have let the arch resolve and then get that quarter of a percentage point. <laughs> yeah. If he draws the last basic in his deck, then you did it. I, mean, I don't think he's going to get the last basic, but he has a better chance of drawing a basic. Sure. Which is way better than him drawing a spell on you. Eh, it's about the same. Justin's got like This just in, John cards. Douglas values yeah. a spell the same amount as he values a basic land. So you've got other spells in your hand, and... Drawing a basic land off the top means that you've got your step or closer to casting several spells a turn. <clears throat> All right. So do we pull the trigger on this Immortal Sun now? He's got four mana. Bryce so with a grip full of he cards. Had three before minus two draw steps. Right. And so if you weren't going to do it before, why would you do it now? Control deck has six cards. If you don't have any other plays because your draw engine is gone. Yeah. The the board has changed dramatically since then. Amar number two. This is interesting. I don't know if Bryce... Uh, I don't know what Bryce's plan is here. His chemistry's insights doing work. Yeah, and all kinds of chemistry's insights going. Pitching this basic instead of this Teferi, which honestly I would pitch the Teferi. Um, well, maybe maybe he feels like he can cleanse Nova, the thing out, and get another Teferi. <laughs> yeah. You could definitely do that. But I don't think it's worth taking up hand space. So this is where I don't I don't think Justin. Uh, is favored anymore. He's doesn't have Bryce below ten. He's got uh, one creature on the board. I feel like he's afraid to cast spells. I think he's afraid to cast spells. He's just weighing his options. No, right. here's Vraska's contempt. Is that a main phase Vraska's contempt? I don't know if it's main phase or end of turn, but it's definitely not on Justin's turn. Justin did not untap. Yeah, something's got to give here. Yeah. So I think Justin's waiting for an opportunity to throw out this Immortal Sun. 
I don't think it's going to come. I think your opportunity was to run it in when he had the three man open and just make him have it right then and there. But all right, here's Shalai. You could use the Immortal Sun as a bait spell for Shalai. <laughs> Or just use Shalai as a bait spell for the Immortal Sun, but... Yeah, depending on how you value it. Justin's not willing to run anything into... I would cast this uh, flower. <coughs> yeah, sure. Yep. Certainly now that you didn't draw land. Or maybe he's, maybe he's waiting to, you know, march the multitudes, and if it doesn't get countered, flower... Legion's Landing. Here we go. That's a good spell. That's a good one. Uh, we're being streamed from Game Swap in Mason, Ohio, just north of Cincinnati. Which is in the great United States of America. Negate on the Legion's Landing. It's a good sign. Or a bad sign, depending on how you look at it. Right. Because it could mean that he just has so much counter magic he can start throwing the gates at things like Legion's Landings. Right. Here's Lamar. 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 Uh, yeah. Use some removal spell. Magic is one of the many fun things in Ohio. I don't know where you're from, but I have all kinds of fun in Ohio. Well, you are currently dressed as a cow. So. <laughs> I'm dressed as a cow. We have many cows in Ohio. There are many cows. And lots of corn. Lots of corn. Lots of soybean. We have uh, at least two entertaining football teams, if not good entertaining. Um, we have two entertaining baseball teams. One good one. Two entertaining ones. Uh, we have the second largest university in the United States. Uh, I don't. I'm a steer. Not a. I'm a cow. I'm a cow by bovine by, by uh, taxation or taxonomy. Taxonomy is that what you call the classification of animals? That's what we'll run with. Taxonomy. All right, so this Tristani may just earn a Sinister Sabotage. That's what we're waiting to see, is these Sinister Sabotages coming out. Yep. <coughs> now you have to cast the Immortal Sun. Um, depends on I what would, you've got in hand. I would be... Here's what I would be doing. I would be reading Bryce for how he's conducting himself when he casts these... These counter spells, like if he's if he looks at the whole hand and like selects from amongst the cards, that's different than right. If he pauses, thinks about it, you know what I mean. Land for turn. Just waiting to draw a march of the multitudes. I guess is Justin's plan. Like run out his creatures that he draws. District guide. That guy can attack. John Douglas' favorite district guide. I'm a big, big district guide fan. Um, I think it's going to be district guide is going to be very good when we get the full set of guild gates. Sure. Swing for two. <coughs> Down to sixteen. No rush here for Bryce. We're just gonna pass it back. Probably <laughs> <laughs> The no end of turn removal spell means a lot. Here's Bona. Hey Bona. All right. So now Justin has a Conclave, Conclave Tribunal, which might earn a counter spell here. Oh, March the Multitudes. Here's the counter spell, okay. Perfect. And so now he definitely gets to resolve something. Let's do it. We get a surveil. He has two conclave tribunals and a mortal sun. He can cast them all. Yes. So we're gonna be able to resolve something here, and we're hoping it's the immortal sun, I'd imagine. Cast tribunal. Here's a conclave tribunal. Yeah. 
lets it go. Wisely, I think. See, I don't know that Bryce knows that... Oh, jeez. The chromium. Bring up chromium. Bring up chromium. This is Bring one we chromium. have not seen on stream yet since... Here's big chromes. Can't be countered. Flash flying. You can discard a card to make him a 1-1. One, one. But okay. you can also resolve an immortal sun. And Dawn of Hope. Jeez. So is Chromium going to be able to race these two cards? He needs three attacks. Probably not. This Vona might help. Yeah. Uh, so Tribunal doesn't... Oh, well, yeah, because it becomes... But it gains Hexproof. Yeah, the Tribunal's going to eat the Vona. Oh, that actually only costs one to cast. This only costs one to cast. Oh, yeah, because it's just yeah, just to pay too much for the Dawn of Hope. Yeah. That's what we're doing there. All right, so Bryce swings in. Bryce is all in on winning this thing now. You can draw an extra card. Everything costs less. Yep. I got a game plan. Yep. So now we just run out this tribunal. Well, the one one gains hexproof. So here's a vampire. 2-2 two, two vampire. Five mana. For a tinder shoot drive. I don't know that I would be loading up my board all that much here. Yeah, this is the Oh, that's a sap migration, sorry. Sapling migration. And here's the Conclave Tribunal. He tried all these other spells first. That's the wrong chromium. Yeah. Cleansing Nova is looking real good right now. Cleansing Nova is a real interesting one. I don't know that I would have run out this sapling migration. Um, but here we are. Yeah, it was it was the least important of the spells Justin cast, but I think he was uh, just casting all the all the spells like leading up. You know what I mean? Right. Casting an increasing amount of importance, and he had all the mana to do it. So. Yeah. So every so by casting the sapling migration, you may have taken two the lifelinking soldiers off the board. All right, here's the Ritual of Soot. He's going to get one life-linking soldier at the end of his turn. Oh, he's going to do it now so he can block the Vona. In game two. Sure. So we're going to take seven game two, which keeps us alive for another turn. Yeah, and then the next turn he can just make all the creatures, all the all the soldiers. So I think he should have done that this turn. I don't <laughs> yeah. So, so here's the thing: he's at eight. Oh, jeez, Bryce is. We're paying seven. I mean, he just gained a bunch. Um, Bryce going to target this Donovo? Interesting. Uh, I don't think the stacking of enchantments and artifacts is sketchy. Like they're clearly all there. Yeah, they're all there. He can, like, you know, look at them if he wants to. I think uh, there's two ways to think about it. You can you can play the way Patrick Chabin does and, like, have each card of its own, you know, unique square of the board. Right. Or you can, you know, 
put like things together. Here he's getting more guys. Mad shoes insight. Bryce is going to gain some insight out of the situation. He's going to continue to gain insight on the situation with a essence scatter discard. That's I think he drew the cleansing nova, which is pretty nice here. Sure. <laughs> what we got here? Invoke the Divine, I believe. Invoke the Divine? Yeah. So we're going to make two guys. Show you a ritual. It's a ritual. And then I'll just swing next to combat stuff. Hands the ritual, so that'll be game. Uh, I'll go out there and hand out some packs if you want to commentate on packs. Yeah, so we, uh, we gotta, we're going to have to do this pretty quick because they went the distance. Love that match. It was a really interesting one to uh, to see them navigate their way through. I thought Justin made some really interesting sideboard choices, but ultimately Bryce's deck is just full of removal, and you saw the power of the chemistry's insights, how he rolled them together. Um, one led to another, led to a third, and it kept his hand really full of the kind, whatever cards he wanted, really. I mean, I think he discarded two lands to the early ones, but when you have the ability to, to get really whatever card you wanted out of your deck, is it's, uh, it's hard to, to not win that game. So here come the packs. Here come the packs. Six gets you the Modern Masters. I'm wondering if anybody's going to choose the trick and just open the Guilds of Ravnica pack. So you choose first. Trick or treat. Trick. We got a follower. Killa Cousins TV. What's with the, the TV uh, ending? I think that was the second uh, TV person to follow us tonight. And I'm, I'm not being, you know, indignant. I just don't, I just don't know. I want to learn. I want to learn. All right, so we got a... Oh, did Bryce win the Modern Masters pack? Justin hit the Dragons of Tarkir pack. You take this. So TV indicates you put that on there when you're a Twitch streamer? Like an indication that you like it's television? Like, hey, like, you know, this is entertainment to be watched. I'm wondering if Justin's going to make it. They make it, uh, or he's going to... Vulnerable God X. I love the Vulnerable God moniker. It's right up my philosophical alley. Alright, are they going to open these packs, or are they just going to... D sideboard. I guess they should D sideboard while they, so they can go play their next match. Yeah. Look at them lay it out for us. So Justin's got these Lyras. weren't very weren't weren't important, and and I guess he took the Sapling migrations out. So those two we saw at the end were the, the only two that were left in there. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Here's our Dragons of Tarkir pack. Um, let's see what comes up. Is that a Comet Storm? Oh no, it's a, the Dragon Tempest. Is that right? Do I have that right spotter? Dragon Tempest? Out of the Dragons of Tarkir pack? <coughs> Alright, we got a Mere Token. Uh, yep, yep, Aether Snipe, Kavu, Elemental, Aether Strand, uh, and nothing out of the, out of the Modern Masters pack, really. We got that foil, we got some rare I'd never seen before, alright. I need to take a potty break, so we have to take some time off here, and uh, 
we will uh, be back very shortly because that had to be the last the last match of the round.